Arizona in the final game in 2001. Broke my heart. We're going to win a national championship. Uh, but it's good to have Mike here. Um, I think uh, you know we've been a little bit light on the pro scouting side, and Mike lives in New York, so he's going to see a lot of Eastern teams that come through New York and Brooklyn. And, that's going to be really helpful for us. He's also a great guy and um, kind of our, kind of, our kind of person, fun to be around and just fun to have here in the building. Do you think that, I mean, that'll obviously help the front office, free agency, different stuff like that. Does that help you during the season? Like, will you give him a call and be like, what you see on the Bucks game? Normally, uh, that's Scott Barnes' job, the, the advanced scout. So <laughs> what, uh, what Mike will be doing is more on the management side of it. In terms of free agency or potential trades, he's looking more at individual talent, whereas <coughs> Scott Vaughn is more looking at uh, upcoming opponents and strategies and themes and that kind of stuff. Draymond said that after last season he needed to step away from the game for a while. Does he look refreshed and, and, and ready to go at this point right now? Yeah, we all needed to step away from the game for a little bit uh, after last season. He's, I mean, in the first two days, he's had great energy, great, he's showing great leadership. Um, he just looks rock solid and, and um, ready to go, but uh, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, I think he's at a different stage in his career now that he's uh, proven himself. He's a multi-time champion, defensive player of the year. He's very comfortable his own skin without being uh, comfortable with his uh, performance. He wants to keep getting better. It's a good position to be in. See, what are you looking forward to with this uh, Salesforce appearance? You know, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, it's uh, one of the best things about living in the Bay Area. Um, it's just the, the number of interesting people that I meet. Um, it's incredible the intellectual capacity in this, in this town, in this area. And uh, so I've spent the last month really leading up to camp, uh, speaking at a lot of uh, events, uh, learning a lot about anything from how Cliff Bar operates uh, <laughs> in their business to climate change and, and what Bay Area leaders in climate change are doing. Uh, and now tonight at Salesforce, um, I'll be speaking, but also listening and meeting some of the other speakers. Looking forward to meeting uh, or seeing Matt Deitch, who is uh, with uh, March for America, or March, March for Our Lives, I should say. Uh, gun safety measures. He's uh, a Parkland kid who's helping lead the, uh, the cause for better uh, gun safety and gun uh, control. And so, it's an amazing place to live, and tonight will be another, uh, another really interesting experience for me. Injury-wise, I mean, obviously DeMarcus is a part of the game, and Lee kind of off to the side. Where are you at health-wise beyond DeMarcus right now? Uh, we're, we're good. We're good. I mean, uh, Andre had a little minor uh, rib issue that kept him from scrimmaging today, but he did everything else. Um, you know, Andre and Sean, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing the last couple of years. We'll, we'll take it easy on them and give them occasional nights off and that kind of stuff. But both guys look and feel good. You got a sense from Bob when there might be a resolution with that now that training camp is starting over the way? No, I think uh, you know, that's, that's really Bob's better question for Bob. I mean, it's uh, nothing new to report. When does, from a coaching standpoint, though, when does his absence really start to affect the way you're um, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I, I guess I'll feel it, you know, as, you know, as we get closer to the season. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll just have to take it day by day and see, and I'll, you know, I'll keep in touch with Bob on all this stuff, see where it's going. And, after all the years of seeing LeBron, what will it be like now going four times against the Well, 
Well, we were already seeing him seven or nine times this season. So <laughs> we're used to we're used to seeing him a lot. But um, I think the main thing that intrigues me is seeing him in a Laker uniform because the Lakers are such an obvious geographical rivalry for us, same division, um, a lot of history, uh, mostly way in the Lakers' favor, um, but you know, you think about uh, the divisional aspect of it and LeBron wearing the purple and gold, the games are going to be awesome. I mean, the atmosphere at our games this year with the Lakers will be off the charts. I think everybody's looking forward to that. Two-way player last year, but he's, he's kind of got his feet around this year. How do you see him kind of react to that? What do you expect from him this year? I think he's uh, he's he's comfortable and com confident now, and uh, he, he was living in the hotel last year for three months. Uh, he would finish practice and you know wind things up and literally just walk off the stairs and go to a hotel. Room. He's got a place to live. He's got his own his own spot, his own space. Uh, he can settle down. He can make his own life here. And that's a huge factor in terms of being able to, to feel better about what you're doing. And when you feel better, generally, you can play better. So he was so good last year. Um, and he earned everything that he got. And I'm, I'm thrilled for him now that he's a really solid part of our group. What do you want to see about him this year? You want to, like, how do you want to take a step? Back? I think uh, continued improvement defensively. Um, you know, and I've talked to him about that. He, he's a good defender. He can be better. Um, last year when we played him, we were playing in big minutes, you know, a step out. And so it's a different role. If you're playing 38 minutes, it's tough to get up and pressure the opposing guard. But, um, you know, if, you, if you're playing 10 or 12 minutes, you got a chance to impact the game defensively. you got to use that energy get up and test, get into people, try to bother people. And, uh, that will be a different role for them if that's how it plays out. Who have the training camp invitees have impressed you so far? Uh, really, it's been it's been fun to watch all of them. Um, you know, Alfonso McKinney is a really nice player. He and Daniel House both have good size on the wing and shoot the ball. Tyler Eulis really knows how to play. You know, he's a uh, really smart player, sees the floor, gets a single offense. Uh, so it's been a really good crop uh, of, of players and it's just fun to kind of see these new guys and uh, incorporate them into our group and see what they can do. How many early, early observations on Jacob? Jacob is uh, just really good defensively. Strong. Uh, he doesn't get pushed around at all. He holds his own. And then on offense, he's got a good feel. You know, he's, he's, uh, he understands the game really well. He's a good, uh, good passer, good cutter. I like what he's doing, shooting the ball. He's putting a lot of arc on the ball. He worked with our assistant coaches uh, quite a bit this summer. Um, worked with really uh, CD, really focusing on getting arc on every shot and he's it's showing in camp. Is that a result of summer league and stuff that yeah, he's off yet? I thought his shot looked flat in summer league and, and so he's focused on you know, getting that thing up mm -hmm. and uh, trying to get more arc, trying to get more uh, rotation and just a little smoother shot. And, um, I think he can be a good shooter. But it always takes time. you got to get used to the NBA game. NBA ball too. It's, it's a totally different ball. That college ball, we could all palm the college ball here. It's so sticky. <laughs> NBA ball is kind of slippery, slick. Can you see is Steph and Kawhi giving him tips so far yet? What's that? You see Steph and Kawhi giving him tips so far yet? Uh, I have not. Yeah. I haven't been paying too close attention. I remember you, last year. I, I remember last like Jordan Bell hit like a buzzer beating jumper in one of the early scrimmages. Has anything notable happened? In no, no, just not. You know, we're, we're, we haven't even gone um, into a, a real full uh, scrimmage yet. Uh, both days we did controlled scrimmages with three teams. Um, we got a lot of bodies. 
know, I think 17 guys playing and, and uh, two or three more on the sidelines. So uh, at this stage of camp, it's hard to play a regular scrimmage and you got a whole bunch of people sitting out. So we're doing more controlled stuff as we get our conditioning and our legs underneath us. Each of the last two years, you've got a rookie you feel comfortable playing. You had Pat the year before, you had Jordan last year. Uh, can Jacob get to that level, or you know, what do what you think? Yeah, saying? I think so. Um, one of the reasons I'm not afraid to play rookies is because of who I get to throw them out there with. <laughs> you know, I mean, can Jacob do all right? Yeah, I'll throw him out there with Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Raymond Green, and Jacob could do fine with those guys. It's a huge luxury to, uh, as a young player, to be able to play with incredibly high caliber, high level players, all-star players, who draw so much attention. And uh, it's a good way to find yourself an open shot. All right. Thanks a lot.